everyone, I'm Dr. John Kennedy. Welcome to MD VOD, your health live and on demand, where each week we examine a medical challenge to help you better understand what the challenge is, who's at risk, the common symptoms, how to make a diagnosis, the treatments and therapies available, and whether insurance covers the costs. Today we're talking about gallbladder disease. Gallstones affect about one in 10 Americans and they're associated with about 3,000 deaths each year. Annually, more than 800,000 hospitalizations are the result of gallstones and over 500,000 people undergo surgery known as cholecystectomy each year. Obesity is one of the strongest risk factors for gallstones, though rapid weight loss diets can also significantly increase the risk. Later in the show, we'll be joined by surgeon Dr. Jason Cohen from Marina Del Rey Hospital. But first, let's take a look at the anatomy of the gallbladder. Hi everyone, welcome to MD VOD, where today we're talking about gallbladder disease. Your gallbladder is a pear-shaped organ that's located just underneath your liver that stores bile, a fluid made by our liver to digest fat. As our stomach and intestines digest food, our gallbladder releases bile through a tube known as the common bile duct, which connects our gallbladder to the liver and to the small intestine. When we eat food containing fat, a substance known as cholecystokinin is released, which causes the gallbladder to contract and release bile into the intestine, which helps us metabolize fat. When something blocks the bile ducts, like a gallstone, the gallbladder gets irritated and inflamed in a process known as cholecystitis. Gallstone attacks usually happen after you eat a fatty meal and may cause nausea, vomiting, right upper quadrant pain, and radiate to your back. Make sure you stay tuned to learn more about gallbladder disease when we're joined by expert Dr. Jason Cohen from Marina Del Rey Hospital. Hi everybody, welcome back to MD VOD, where today we're talking about gallbladder disease and we're here with Jason Cohen, Dr. Jason Cohen Thank from you. Marina Del Rey Hospital to answer our questions. He's a gallbladder surgeon extraordinaire. Um, and we'll take your questions live uh, from Facebook and Twitter now. Um, first question up but is... Before you ask that question, I must correct you. No, go ahead. Yeah, first up <laughs> is um, when you are referred to Dr. Cohen, Dr. Cohen. There you go. Um, that, that was one of the does things. Does insurance cover the costs? That's a great question. The answer is no. No, the, the, of course, insurance definitely covers the cost. Um, it's, it's especially in an emergency setting, um, uh, probably 100% of the cost. Electively, it covers the cost as well. I, I rarely have heard of any difficulty with a patient having coverage in terms of having uh, a gallbladder, even an elective gallbladder removal surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty much always covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. That's important to know. Right. Yeah. Um, and next up is uh, there are some new technologies out there. One is the uh, Da Vinci robot. This is a great question, uh, which is available at Marina Del Rey Hospital. Um, you know, when would you use the Da Vinci robot as opposed to, let's say, laparoscopic uh, cholecystectomy? That's a fantastic question. So, in terms of technology, um, we started with in, in the before the 70s with old-fashioned open surgery. Then in the late 70s and 80s, we switched to doing things laparoscopically. And the trend has always been to go towards less invasive, smaller incisions, minimally invasive um, surgery mm -hmm. uh, for multiple reasons. Uh, less pain, mm -hmm. faster recovery, cosmetics definitely are better with teeny tiny incisions. Mm -hmm. And it's actually easier to some degree, especially on a giant obese patient with gallstones, to do laparoscopically inside. It's the same as it is mm -hmm. on any patient. So it's actually easier for the surgeon to do a laparoscopic mm -hmm. scope and camera gallbladder removal rather than an old fashioned incision. So we keep going further and further along. And one thing that's really nice about the Marina Hospital is they're really embracing technology. And mm -hmm. the newest technology is this Da Vinci robotic surgery. Mm -hmm. And right now the robot is booming. The use of it is booming. It started off actually for cardiac, for heart surgery. Then it switched over to, well, it's still for heart surgery. Then the gynecologists started using it for deep pelvic surgery. The urologists are using it now for prostate surgery. Mm -hmm. And the general surgeon and cancer surgeons, which is what I am, a general and cancer surgeon at the Marina Hospital, we've started um, 
taking it to the next level. So we've now started taking out the gallbladder. Uh, it's really only been within the last two to three years mm -hmm. that removing the gallbladder with the Da Vinci, with the robot, is being done. And, and one of the benefits of that is the visualization, it's 3D. It's like going mm -hmm. to a 3D movie. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, it, we don't actually have to wear glasses. We look into this funny little monitor with both of our eyes and we see it in 3D. The resolution is fantastic and it really allows us to uh, hopefully do a better job. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the you know, misconceptions about the, the robot is that it's a robot uh, performing the procedure, um, but it's actually the surgeon using this incredible technology. It almost looks like a, a video game. Can you tell us a little right, bit about exactly. what it looks like? So, so the way it works is every morning I wake up in my pajamas, I'm laying in bed, <laughs> They bring me the thing, and while I'm laying in bed, I do the robotic surgery at the Marina Hospital. I wish that were the case, no. So what really happens is, is we're all there in the room, but theoretically, we, I wouldn't have to be in the room, but we, I am there in the room. Uh, the robot is actually um, a tower con connected to a bunch of, you don't have a picture of it, connected to a bunch of arms mm -hmm. that are robotically controlled that on the end of those arms have very fine, full 360 degree movements. Mm -hmm. And the patient's under general anesthesia on the table. We wheel over there or dock this robot. After we've made our incisions, just like a regular laparoscopic surgery, mm -hmm. the robotic instruments go in, we set everything up, and then I walk away. I take my gloves and gown off, and I go sit in the room usually. It's, although, again, you could be somewhere else, and they've done it. But in the room, I go sit down, kind of at a video game monitor, and I'm looking into this big, giant uh, projector here, and I'm playing the video game, basically, Donkey Kong. Mm -hmm. That means I'm really old if I'm saying <laughs> Donkey Kong. <laughs> Wow, I'm ancient to say that. Pac-Man would be worse. Yeah, Pac-Man. <laughs> no, that would be better. <laughs> okay. So that's it. That's it, robotic surgery. And uh, again, at the Marina Hospital, they've really uh, embraced doing it there and uh, are trying to push the envelope of what we can do robotically. Mm -hmm. One of the benefits of robotic surgery is they keep, the, the company keeps, and all the companies that are involved in it, keep pushing the limit of what we could do. Smaller instruments, better scopes, better visualization. It's kind of like the movie business a little bit mm -hmm. um, with, with, this, with the cameras and with the, what we're actually seeing. And, it, and as it gets better, what we can do gets better and more advanced and uh, it's just fabulous. Mm -hmm. fabulous. So that's a great uh, summary of what this uh, new technology can do. And it's available at uh, Marina Del Rey Hospital, which is where you practice. And I liked how you summarized kind of the history of um, gallbladder disease, how we treat it anyways, with this big open incision that we used to do in the right upper quadrant to laparoscopic surgery, which is certainly still very uh, right. important. Uh, and now robotic surgery. And as we've advanced, smaller incisions, less pain, decreased length of stay, and uh, a, lo a lot of times there's less pain medication requirements. Is that, is that true Definitely. as well? Thank you. Just because yeah. there's a smaller incision? So or? smaller incision, less pain for sure, because one of the things that uh, is the hardest to recover from is recovering from that giant incision. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where most of the pain comes from. So with laparoscopic surgery, it's a bunch of little holes. Uh, that's easier to recover from. We manipulate and deal with and futz with futz with the intestines a lot less mm -hmm. and with the internal organs a lot less, we're really able to just get to where we need to be, mm -hmm. take care of the problem and get out. Mm -hmm. And one other thing is I was saying that cosmesis is a big issue also, mm -hmm. how, how things look. One of the pushes now even with laparoscopic, with taking out gallbladders, where it's, the standard is four little holes, the tendency now is to actually do it through one little hole at mm -hmm. the belly button. It's a slightly bigger hole than the hole we're initially using, but there's no four incisions anymore. Mm -hmm. It's just one incision hidden really well at the belly button. Mm -hmm. And while people are doing it laparoscopically with scopes and cameras by itself, it's a much better operation to be done robotically mm -hmm. if you really want to do it that way, because the instrumentation, the scopes, really allow you to do that surgery better. If you're wow. aiming for one incision to take out your gallbladder, it really is a better way to do it robotically. Mm -hmm. And again, the Marina Hospital is really embracing that, which is nice. And in terms of cost, uh, is there a difference with robotic surgery versus laparoscopic versus open? Is there any difference at all in cost? At the end of the day, the cost evens out. Mm -hmm. Up front though, like starting any business, mm -hmm. you're gonna have, not to the patient, but to the hospital uh, and to the facility that are doing the technology, mm -hmm. it's gonna cost more. Mm -hmm. But as we do more mm -hmm. surgery and do more volume of surgeries with the instruments that we have, the cost evens out. Mm -hmm. And over time, 
just like any new toy, it costs more, and over time that toy is cheaper. Well, that's great stuff. Um, I want to thank you very much, Dr. Jason Cohen You're from welcome. Marina Del Rey Hospital, it's telling pleasure. us about the risk, uh, the treatment, and the therapies available now uh, for gallbladder disease. If you missed any of, of today's show, make sure to go to empowerme.tv, MDVOD. Today, our uh, whole show was on gallbladder disease. Thank you so much. Take care. We'll see you next time. Hi everyone, welcome back to Apple A Day where we're learning about common sense tips to avoid gallstones. Obesity and rapid weight loss diets contribute to the creation of gallstones, so you should try to avoid both. Apples are a source of pectin, which has been shown to sequester bile and facilitate its elimination in the stool. And a remedy known as the gallbladder flush is a popular remedy in alternative medicine wherein the patient drinks four glasses of pure apple juice, not cider, and eats five apples each day for five days. Then fasts briefly, taking magnesium, and then drinks a large quantity of lemon juice mixed with olive oil before bed. The next morning, they painlessly pass a number of green and brown pebbles, which are purported to be stones flushed from the biliary system. If you have any concerns about gallstones, Remember to always talk openly with your medical professional and reach out to cdc.gov for more information because the more you know about any condition and how to manage it, the better off you are. I hope our show on gallbladder disease and gallstones help you better understand the condition, how to prevent it, and what to do if it strikes you or a loved one. And make sure you stay connected and subscribe to us on YouTube. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and don't forget to share us with your families and friends. And be sure to leave all your comments and questions so that we can better help you with your health. I'm Dr. John Kennedy, and you're watching MD VOD, your health live and on demand here on empowerme.tv. We'll see you next time. And now, for any episodes you might have missed, they're available at the EmpowerBee.tv website and the YouTube channel. And be sure to leave us any comments and questions so that we can better help you deal with your disease. We'll see you next time on MDVOD.